All right, a lot of you have asked me over the years what I actually take with me when I go on long bike tours. So I'm actually going to give you a video of everything I take. Now, mind you, I overpack, but the reason I overpack is because when I leave on a bike trip, yeah, if it's going to be over three weeks, there's a good chance that it can extend. The last one that I did in the Sierras, I expected to be out for 21 days and maybe about 800 miles, and it ended up being 3,000 miles in 85 days. So I tend to bring as much with me as I think I might need for no matter what I encounter or how long I extend my trip. So I'm going to start first the trailer. I'll show you that fully loaded in the end. Then after the trailer, there's my bath kit sunscreen and then after that is all my different tool equipment so or bike equipment so that's tire levers a multi-tool three patch kits a boot kit which is if you slice a tire so wide you need to repair not the inner tube but the tire uh, you put a boot in and that'll keep it until you can get to another town and then next to that are three inner tubes two for the bike one for the trailer a little oil and then I have sunglasses and chammy butter. Chammy butter is for on those days when you're in the saddle for eight or nine hours and it's super hot and you're sweating, you can actually get diaper rash. So the chammy butter you actually put on those days and it keeps you from getting diaper rash. Then there's some bungee cords, which I use to keep things secured to the top of my trailer, like drying my laundry or my solar panels, which I'll show you in a minute. For the first time, I'm going to be bringing a small solar-powered uh, emergency radio, though I'm not really using it for the radio. I'm really using it just to listen to, like, NPR and stuff in camp at night. I always bring wet wipes because there's often times when I'm just sleeping on the side of the road or in some bushes or on a camp campsite that doesn't have water, and I have to uh, wipe myself down or else you'll get saddle sores. I always bring lotion because I'm in the sun for 8, 9, 10 hours a day. And so that's, it's good to keep me from getting too dried out because I start to get itchy. I bring a lock, one big enough for the bike and then a, a long, thin one that I can do my trailer with. I bring a couple of small um, mesh bags just for assorted things I can throw in. My riding gear, I have one lightweight uh, fleece, two light riding jerseys, a long sleeve jersey, two pair of shorts, a pair of riding tights, and those tights are called Illuminites. They have a ton of reflective stuff on them, and so they light up at night. Two bandanas plus one on the bike, and then that is a small windbreaker rain jacket that folds into its own pocket. It's from Marmot. And that's on top of the jersey and the the um, shorts I wear plus the riding sandals. Here I have two orange dry sacks. One will hold my camp clothes, one holds my riding clothes. They both um, actually have an air valve on them so once you pack them up you can squeeze them and close the air valve so they tighten up very small. Then on top of that I bring a, a Leatherman multi-tool, a Swiss Army knife, a headlamp and that's a USB rechargeable headlamp with a dimmer on it. I always bring three or four zip ties because they'll hold anything together and stuff always seems to fall apart after a long trip. That's a small roll of Velcro. It's useful for everything. I've used those things for years. They just keep things together. That's my other solar panel. Or that's my that's my other two dry sacks. That's a solar panel battery. That solar panel battery is a 25,000 milliamp battery, which will recharge my phone nine times from empty to full before it needs to be recharged. But I keep it bungeed to the back of the trailer so it stays pretty much charged all the time. Next to that is a, a, an inflatable Lucy Lantern, which is the same thing. It, it's powered by a solar panel. I've never had it run out. I use it in camp every night. Flattened, it sits in the gear loft at the top of my tent and keeps my tent lit. If I inflate it, it's a great camp lantern when I'm sitting around talking with people. 
Next to that is my Kindle. And this time I'm going to be following a, a, a bicycle guide, bicycling the, the Mississippi, at least to start. And so normally I use maps, but this time I'm going to be following a book. Above that, I tend to go a little overboard, but I bring a large base camp thermarest because I like to be comfortable. Then there's my new tent because I had to finally replace the old one because it kept getting peed on and I couldn't get the pee smell out. Next to that, that's a small summer bag and a camp pillow. Again, I like comfort, so I bring a little camp pillow with me. Underneath that, the green is a packable camp towel. That'll dry in an hour in the sun, um, even less when it's on the back of my trailer drying as I bike. This red thing is the, excuse me, the red thing is the, that's a chair. It'll, my thermorest goes into that. Next to that are two platypus camp, or canteens. I have four of those, two more are in my bike. They fold up, I normally don't need them, but when I'm crossing long stretches of desert or other areas in the mountains with, with sparse services, sometimes I can go a day or two without water. So each one of those is two and a half liters. So with four of them, I have 10 liters of water plus the water bottles on my bike. Above those are a very light long sleeve um, thermal underwear and long and, uh, for, and then pants. Those, I just sleep in those on cold nights. Uh, if it's warm out, I just sleep in boxes and a t-shirt. But that is some, some of the food I'll be starting with. I'm, I'm coming, I always take some form of seeds, peanuts or um, in this sunflower seeds and granola bars just to keep my energy up during the day. Next to that is um, that's Propel and Emergency Electrolyte Replacement. It's sugar-free, but it gives me the salt I need from biking all day. I always keep my food in a big Trader Joe's sack because you have to take it. Either you're going to tie it up into a tree at night, or you have to take it with you into the uh, tent or else raccoons pillage it. So I just keep mine in a, in, in, in a reusable Trader Joe's sack. I keep a, a black plastic sack or any kind of reusable plastic sack as my trash sack. And when I'm leaving camp at night or in the morning, I pour it all out. Next to that's a little bear bag. Occasionally when I'm up in the mountains, I have to uh, tie my food up into a tree. And so I always keep one of those floating around in the bag. Underneath that is my, uh, it's, my bug spray and some more wet wipes then we'll get to my kitchen stuff here is a little plastic cutting board and strainer and then above that is my this is a titanium canteen with uh, a, a nestled cook or a nestled cup and the cup you can use um, to cook things in. It has a lid. And then next to that is, underneath that, are, excuse me, are two camp cups. Uh, they nest inside of each other. They're insulated, so if I'm soaking food, I can put it in the bigger one, soak it. Um, so say if I've got freeze-dried beans or something for dinner, I can put them in, heat the water up in my, in my canteen cup, then pour it in there, close the lid, and let it soak till it fully rehydrates, and then eat it from there. Then I have a small coffee cup. There's the lid. This is my stove. I'm using an MSR Dragonfly, which uses white gas, diesel, kerosene, or unleaded gas. Meet that, I always carry a small grill with me. It only weighs a couple of ounces, but it's great because a little small fire, you can throw on a couple of hot dogs or grill some veggies. It just, it makes life much easier. Back over here, I have both my, the yellow is a rainproof water cover for my helmet. And underneath that is a small warm cap that will nestle under my helmet and keeps me warm on very cold morning rides. Above that is all my, those are all my different plugs and electronics. I, I always carry an extra pair of earphones because I seem to sweat through them and they get destroyed. I carry a three-pronged plug because oftentimes when you're in a campground, there may only be one plug for all the campers, especially bicyclists, to use. 
So if I have a three prong plug, I can plug in, I automatically move to the front of the line, and then the person who is there gets, still gets a plug, and then somebody else gets a plug. So I've always found that it's been the best thing for me. Those are, the, the USB chargers are two USB plugs, so if I ever have to recharge things, I can do it quickly, like at a restaurant or a gas station if I stop. I always bring an extra sack of batteries. For camp clothes, I bring one pair of boxers, two t-shirts, two pair of nylon cargo pants that dry very, very easily and very quickly. I have a puffy jacket that packs up to about the size of a grapefruit. And that's great. These are from Amazon Essentials. They're $39, and this one is as good, if not better, than my $200 North Face one that I have. And then on top of that, I have, I always bring two pair of socks in case it's a cold morning, and I, and I, I don't want to be biking barefoot because I wear sandals. I wear uh, biking sandals instead of regular closed-toed shoes. And then I have a pair of wool socks for those cold nights when I'm camping because I do bring a summer bag, so it's only rated to 58 degrees. And sometimes I've been up in the mountains where it's froze at night. And so with that, my light fleece, the long underwear, the cap, and the wool socks, I'm normally good. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to affect me. That's a mesh bag for my dirty laundry. I always bring a mesh bag because... You just sweat and everything, and if you throw it into a plastic bag or if you throw it back into the dry sack, it just gets gamey and it gets sort of repellent. But in a mesh bag, it airs out and it's not n nearly as bad when you need to finally wash it. And I have my helmet. My helmet has both a headlight and a tail light on it. They're USB rechargeable, and so they can be recharged off of that solar power powered battery that I have. And it also has the debrim, and the debrim is a game changer. It has kept so much sun off my head and neck over the years, it's just unbelievable. And then on the bike, the bike itself is obviously my Surly disc trucker, and I have front and rear racks on it, but I've done something new on this tour. I've put trunks on the front and the back. In the back, I'll keep gear, um, a raincoat, and... Uh, all of my bike equipment like extra inner tubes and stuff so I can get to it quickly if I need to if I get a flat and you can see that there uh, along the side of the rear trunk is a, it's a pump and then on the back rack I have um, on the hanging off the back is I have a, a flashing rear light that's battery powered I always keep one of my lights battery powered just in case something happens in my overall battery breaks I always have a couple of batteries around then on the front I'll keep Food that I want to snack with during the day. So granola bars, fruits, nuts. And that's also where I keep the extra two. It's where I keep the extra two canteens. Those are right there. And then on the front of the bike, I have a headlight. So I have a headlight, which is 250 lumens on my helmet and then a headlight there is 350 lumens and then I have a flashing front red light which um I'll be honest with you because um I've been like when I rode through Florida in the winter time the fog was so thick on these country roads and the farmers are riding down the middle of the road because they didn't want to accidentally drift off the road but they were close enough where they could have hit me so having that flashing red light is really a game changer. It keeps people from hitting me. I have a map case on top of my handlebars. And then underneath the map case is a Jones Loop little bag. And in there I keep my iPhone, an extra bandana. And then I always keep a little extra money, spending money right there. And that's, in essence, my setup. Oh, I do keep three water bottles. The two big ones are one liter Zephyls and the other one is a small uh, 24 ounce. So on the bike I always keep about two and a half liters of water and then I have the option to carry another 10 liters. So given the fact that if, say if I'm biking across the desert like when I went across Nevada and Utah in the middle of June and July when it was well over 100 degrees every day and there was no water, that, that normally gets me between water sources. If it really looks like it's going to be bad, I'll pick up an extra 1.5 or maybe even 2 and slip those into the trailer. 
So this is what I take on a tour. This is everything. If I leave the house with this setup, I can honestly be gone for many, many months. Just resupplying for the occasional stop for more fuel for the stove or grabbing more food and water. But other than that, this is everything I need to be literally gone. I could be gone for a year on what you see here. I hope this clarifies to people who've been asking me now for years what it is I take and how I arrange it. I'll show it to you fully packed in a little bit. Thank you. Bye.